All right, uh, let's give a round of applause to the next speaker, which is Robert, who will be talking about Neo Tool Suite, which is a productivity suite integrated with the Matrix. <laughs> Um, hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me here today, and welcome for those who are just arriving at the conference. Um, my name is Robert Gerbeau. I am a business developer and project manager for software development at Nordic IT in Hamburg. At Nordic IT, we are specialized in the um, conception and development of matrix-based clients. So I want to thank you for participating here today and also for the Matrix Foundation community for making this possible. So what I want to do today is our time here to show you guys our Neo 2 suite. So the Neo 2 suite is, in a nutshell, um, a productivity suite integrated with Matrix. So let's take a closer look on the elements that compose the Neo 2 suite. So the Neo 2 suite was uh, designed to be, first, at first, uh, a set of applications, or what we usually call widgets, and we like to call actually matrix applications, uh, designed to work to run inside of Element, in your Element Messenger. So you can launch and use them in your Element Messenger. So the, uh, at the moment, the current five widgets that are possible to be used inside Element are the Neo Date Fix, which is uh, a messenger, which is a meeting and um, calendar organizer, and the NeoDate Fix has also the task of including the other widgets into the room. I'm going to show you guys how this works in a moment. The Neo Choice, which is a poll of all, a vote widget. We have the Neo Bar Camp, which is uh, a tool that was created to auxiliate, to support moderators in the conduction of discussion in large groups. Uh, the Neo Map, which I also want to show you guys firsthand today, it's a navigation map integrated in Element, and the Neo Board. So the Neo Board is a whiteboard concepted for um, facilitating collaboration and creation of content in uh, teams working remotely. So our focus today will, in fact, lie on the Neo Board, and I will explain to you guys why in a minute. Uh, I'm going to go through all the widgets, but our focus is going to lie on the Neo Board. And this is because um, as a company specialized in matrix-based uh, uh, matrix clients, uh, it became clear to us in the past time that we should also take this step forward and start developing our own matrix clients. So the result of this is what you're seeing today in this presentation, so which what we call the new board standalone. So the new board standalone is a new board running completely independent from Element or any other client as an online service. So this is our very first matrix-based client. Uh, so what are the characteristics, goals, and the vision behind of new board standalone? So um, uh, first of all, as a dedicated tool, so what we are envisioning is that in the near future, once you publish it, you'll be able to uh, access our website, register, have a login, and start using it, collaborate with your colleagues, and uh, collaborate with your friends, and also subscribe to one of our packages. We also are aiming to publish it under a GPL, which will allow you to um, uh, self-host it if you need, and also contribute back. So when we were designing uh, the new board standalone, uh, we laid a lot of focus on facilitating collaboration. So the new board is uh, fundamentally uh, designed to facilitate collaboration between colleagues working together and between people working in large groups. So uh, which makes the new board standalone ideal for situations just as this, like presentations, but also for the creation of content for courses, uh, workshops, training programs, classes, and, and, and coaching. So I'm telling you this because the two sectors that most influenced us in the conception of this tool was first the public sector in Germany with whom we have a few of our clients, but also the uh, education sector. Uh, another feature of the new board that uh, uh, supports this argument of collaboration synchronicity. So the new board allows multiple users to uh, uh, um, uh, collaborate at the board and create a content, content um, 
simultaneously and in real time, thus making it uh, ideal for uh, teams working remotely or distributed work environments. So uh, users from different uh, working as a, at a distance could use all the tools, draw, write, interact with each other, just generating a dynamic workspace. Another point that was also important for us in the new board was to invest in, in, in design. So the new board is designed to be easy to use and to be intuitive with a simple and clear inter interface requiring absolutely uh, almost no or minimal training. So this allows users to uh, immediately adopt the board and start creating content and collaborating uh, with minimal effort and no explanation. Another point that is uh, also uh, relevant here is that we decided when we we're concepting the new board to go for our slide uh, depicting of the, of the um, content that's being created in the board. So once you create the content in the board, you'll be automatically structuring in slides on the left side. Moreover, we also decided to limit uh, the space of the board, so this is not an infinite board, which you can uh, create content infinitely, uh, because in our opinion, this facilitates um, um, the navigation of the user through the board, and th so the user don't get lost uh, when collaborating with one another. Uh, this board will be in the future fully encrypted, which means that the data that you're sharing in the board uh, is going to be only visible for you, and the content that you're creating is going to only be visible for people you invite into the board. Another relevant point here in this matter is that we're also working with one of our business clients to create a self-hosted or platform version in a way that you'll be able to add the new board to a platform through like a gadget or add-on or a plug-in and have it on, on the interface of the platform, uh, a button away. I click a button and you open the standalone. This means that this tool will be also uh, customizable, not only in terms of design, if you want to customize it for your own use case, but also if you need uh, further features. It will be also possible to add further features as use case and as required. So the new board received this name, as I mentioned, because it runs independently from any other client as an online service. But here is also important to mention that uh, it still works in sync with the new board running inside of Element. So when you edit the new board inside of Element, it automatically, in real time, transmits your editing for the uh, standalone uh, running online. So this is the main characteristic that I want to talk with you about the board. So. Uh, this presentation will be actually a little bit interactive here in my team. So at this point on, I would like to invite my team here to join the board so we can uh, show you guys how a few of the functionalities work. Uh, yeah, so um, maybe we can just start uh, design. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so I have to first enable editing because uh, this tool allows also to edit during presentations, but other tools don't, don't allow that. And um, so what I can do is turn on uh, the um, collaborators cursor here and see who is creating what, right? So as you can see, people here with me already j jump in, already creating content on the board, uploading images, and I want to explain to you guys some of these features. For example, join the tech talk here is um, uh, a shape that was uh, inserted, and what happens is if I, take this shape here and change the size, you can see the font also change automatically. I can change also the color behind the shape and also the gradient of the color. And as you can see, also the font color also change automatically in a way that, in a way that a user will not be able to put a, a, a white background and, and not see what's written anymore. But of course, I can still uh, change the, the font color if I want manually. And yeah, so uh, beside of that, I wanted to also show the, the slide structure here, as I mentioned. And you can always export the board and import new boards here into this context. Um, yeah, and undo and upload images and also is available for GIF. Right, so uh, thank you. Um, I think this is what I want to show for now for the new board standalone. I will skip to the next part then, which is to give you guys a glimpse of what's coming up regarding this too. So these are some features that I took out from our product roadmap, and I want to mention a few of them with you. 
The first of them is sticky notes. So we want to have a noted tool uh, available here under in the toolbar. Uh, accessibility, we want to deliver state-of-the-art accessibility uh, here through this tool. So templates, we also have an ongoing project right now which is creating templates to the new board, like for example, for a retrospective or SWOT analysis, you can just upload it. Uh, there are one friend of ours here is are creating a calendar. You can just upload the calendar for, from year one to in the year, I don't know, 4,000. Um, enhance the text formatting tools. Uh, I, I hope you saw in the uh, last slide, we have already some uh, text formatting tools available, but we want to provide more of them. Uh, process tools, um, uh, no, sorry, shapes and arrows. I want to mention shapes and arrows. We want to have more shapes available and more arrow functions. And of course, everything is gonna be end-to-end -end encrypted. Okay, um, so I'll skip now to the next widget. And for the next widget, I'll have to leave my presentation for a moment and go to here to the element. So I want to show you guys how the NeoDate Fix work, how you set a meeting in NeoDate Fix. So as I said, it's the widget inside of Element. And uh, it is the widget that brings the other widgets into the room. So how this is done? So here is the interface where you, where you see your calendar with days and, and in, in the time. You create in schedule, schedule a meeting. So what happens you that you receive this dialogue and you can say matrix conference presentation. So the time here, I can set the time. If I'm one, I can change, but it sounds fine. And the date is today. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna here, invite my colleagues here to join me so we can show together the other widgets. I hope I don't forget anyone. Please raise your hand if I, forget, if I forgot you. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm a Christian. Uh, Paul, you know, and uh, maybe also if Bjorn wants to join me, I'm gonna put Norman as well. Yeah, so I, what I'm doing is that I'm creating a meeting, I'm already inviting people to the meeting with who I want to participate. And as you can see here in the field underneath, the widgets which I just mentioned are already included on the field, which means when I click and create the meeting, the widgets will be automatically in the room. So I'm gonna do that. So what happened is that the meeting is now booked here on this, as a slot and I received um, a notification, I hope you saw it, telling me that a new room was created. So what I'm gonna do is to double click here. I see that people were invited, probably they are accepting now the, the invitation. I'm gonna click join and now I'm inside the room. So inside of a room with a, boy, a, a, a button to join the conference, and this uh, widget, the NeoDate Fix, is supported by Jitsi call. So this is the Jitsi call. I could just start the call over here. So, but this is not exactly what I want to do now. I'm going to close it. So what I want to do now as a last point is I want to jump back here to my presentation and go back here to this slide and maybe delete some things here. And what I'm going to do is as last point to show how another functionality of the new board is these two worlds here being combined. So what I did here is that I opened the same board inside of Element at the right side, and on the left side I have the board uh, running as a standalone, right? So what we're gonna do here is, I have to leave the presentation modus, yes. Go to one side, create like a circle inside of the Element, the board running inside of Element version. As you can see, the content that I'm including is being automatically created, transmitted, and created on the standalone version. So both um, versions works in sync. So this is the last thing I want to show you about the new board. Uh, so here on the toggle bar above, so we have the video conference button and the new board button, as I just mentioned. So I can now include the new board into the room with the same functionalities. I show you guys that already. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump to this um, widget here, which is the new choice, which is a widget that helps me create polls and voting. So this is the interface that you're gonna get once you open the widget. And what I can do here is I can click and create a poll, and then I get a dialog. So I have to give the poll a number, which is uh, names, sorry, which I will call it matrix conference poll. 
I can insert a description if I want, but what I definitely need to do is to insert a question. And the question I have already here, I'll just copy it, paste it here. So do you believe that decentralization is the answer to the problem of data security? So what I can do here, I can uh, uh, choose between an answer type, yes, no, or abstain, or yes or no. Why there are only, only two? Because this two was first designed to work in a, a vote context for public sector. So they only need that um, at that time. So I would, choose for, I would choose for yes, no, and abstain. I can set up a time here. I will set actually for now just one minute. And I'll decide by name, which means that people who are voting, I will be able to see their name and what they vote for. So display results, I will say save. Then I'm gonna get displayed, there is a poll, a next poll here to be started. I'm gonna start the poll. And start. So what you're gonna see is that there's a countdown here going down and, and see live results. So people are already voting, I'm also gonna vote for yes. And what I can do is uh, see live results, and then the poll widget will display for me how people in the room are voting live until the countdown is, is finished. So I can go here uh, down and say that, oh, there's a person here who decided not to, to, to give his opinion, yes or no, and I have a certain uh, um, uh, statistics here also displayed. And what I can do is say, okay, everybody already vote. Uh, I can just end the poll. Um, uh, earlier, I don't need it anymore, so end the poll, yeah, end now. And then I can generate the result through a PDF and send it to someone. Uh, let me see how much time I still have, just one second. Okay, so then I have to skip now to the bar camp. I'm gonna go actually for the bar camp to this, another space here. Uh, so the bar camp is a tool that you guys probably already saw yesterday, the people who were here, you use it. Uh, so this bar campus was designed by us, by Nordic. And I'm gonna go quickly through it. So what's happening here is that you have uh, a left area and a right area. So on the right area, the moderator will suggest the topics at first. So I can also allow here for this button, that's the, the, the people collaborating on the bar camp or participating on the bar camp could also suggest uh, subjects. But I have already some things prepared, and I can see here as a moderator, okay, I know what's coming next as topics to be discussed here through this uh, preview. So what I'm gonna do is say select a topic, and then the next topic will pop up here in the parking lot. So I'm gonna select all of them, so we can see that now I have three topics on the pop-up. So what I will do as a moderator, or I'll suggest that to participators, is to choose one of these topics and, and drag and drop here to the track. Right, I'm gonna do it myself. I'll say that here's inter interesting to discuss new board as an agile tool. So I bring here, put in a parking lot. And what happens is that, I'm gonna show you guys here in the rooms, is that uh, the topic allows me to select a room, right, for this discussion. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna select a room. Okay, there's one room available, bar camp one, assign. And you're gonna see that the room one was renamed for the name of the topic. So what people uh, who are now uh, here participating in the bar camp will do is that they will join the room to see people, some people already joined this topic. And now what they're gonna do is that they're gonna start a video conference and start discussing about it. Right. Uh, so I still have a one minute left. Uh, so what I want to do at last, but not least, is show you guys firsthand one thing here, which is this tool here. Uh, let me close this, let me make more space here. So what I'm showing you now is a map uh, embedded in an element. So and I, today, I want this one, it's not still available, Right, um, but I want to show you guys uh, three features. Uh, the first of them is uh, the zoom out and zoom in. So if I keep zooming out, so I saw already another thing here happening. I'm gonna explain you guys in a minute. You see, I can see Berlin, I can see Germany now, and I can see Europe and so on. Um, so I can move the map as any navigation map. And what's happening here now is that uh, the location of people who are now logged in on this map through their mobile phone are popping up on the map. 
So, uh, which means that this, this map can already transmit live location, right? So this was the second feature that I want to show you, and I want to show you already the third feature, which people, my teams are here is already, are already doing. They're, they're marking locations on the map. So I wanted also to mark a location so you guys see how it works. Unfortunately, it's still in German, but I can say uh, Japanese restaurant. And it's definitely true. I definitely recommend you guys to go in a Japanese restaurant over here. It's um, the best in your area. I live here in the area. Um, I, I'm not sponsored by it. Um, but yeah, so, so this is the map tool uh, that we also are, want to keep developing. And as you can see, there's, still, there's already a few functionalities that are, that are working, the location, the uh, mark location, the, the live, sharing live location, and, and the clarity design of the map. Okay, so uh, this is everything that I want to share with you guys today. Uh, I hope I could uh, bring you guys closer to our idea of how we should, of, of Nordic's idea, how the new date suite should be and uh, where the, our travel is going, is heading, and I'll be happy to try to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Okay, who has some questions? Nice. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So the first question is, um, what is this uh, integration manager and is it open source? And if not, like, can you share a little bit about how you implemented it and whatever? The second question is, um, how much of these feature, how many of these features or how much of each of these features is actually using matrix? Like for example, the location, is that related to some matrix events or is it a complete standalone app that is just embedded into matrix as a widget? Okay, so the second question I'll, I'll pass to my team, but the first question I can answer. Uh, so interesting question because we're exactly at this moment uh, in, in, in talking with Element of how can we improve our integration manager. So in the near future, what we are envisioning, and I'm gonna say this now, but probably is the, where the journey is going, is that you're gonna be able to activate the widgets through the integration manager direct into the room. So at the moment, as I showed, you need the new date fix bot. Right? You include the new date fix and you include the widgets inside of this field so you can launch them into the room. So, but I'm sure that in the near future it's gonna be different. You're gonna open the integration manager and you're gonna have the matrix apps, which we're calling them right now, matrix apps, and you're gonna be able to directly through the integration manager to include them into the room. Is that okay as an answer? Or do you wanna, no? Okay. So the matrix, <laughs> I'm gonna pass here to Michelle. So, uh yeah. Um, Mask. So we are trying to, to map it always to Matrix uh, events um, for location, live location sharing. So what you have seen on the map, this are, those are the live location beacons. Um, for the markers, you could use uh, the location share as a single location share, but we decided not to do it because it floods the timeline with location uh, events and you can't easily attach currently more information to it, but we try to use it, and everything else you have seen is also custom events, and they are documented in the repos in architectural documents. Thanks, very cool talk. Uh, as I've mentioned to you, I'm interested in the widget stuff. So uh, I, I'm I'm also interested. As I, I I think that was my my first question, the, you know, what integration does it have with the matrix existing events? So they're custom. So uh, maybe this is a follow up um, for like a, a, a new client to support this, right? Let's say that I wanted to, um, I don't know, from my client have a native interface to join one of these special widget based Jitsi meetings or something else. Is that like a standardized protocol or is there a spec or is this just regular matrix stuff or do I have to do something, you know, special to the Neo tool suite? So we talk about the widget spec, right? There's kind of a uh, widget API. Um, it's partially spec'd and if you want to know more about that in detail, join the talk about it tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. So I will give another talk about the technical side of all of this. 
it, it's too much to answer now in, in yeah. a minute. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Let, so, no. w one last thing, if you want to contact us, just we have a public room, and these are my contact data. Just write me anytime or go and join us in our room and pose your questions. I'll be able to uh, exchange with you. Yeah, I think there's a second question over there. Um, so, uh, the polls, that just interests me. Isn't there already a poll thing on Matrix? directly, so why is it now from the integration, or did I understand that wrong? And the second question is, could this integration manager somehow be used for other apps other than um, Element, yeah. or a fork of Element? Yeah, so uh, yes, I, th I, I know there's a poll in Matrix, but I, w I, I decided to show this poll because it was really created by, by Nordic in a way that we fulfill the use case. Right, so there, there was a concrete use case for um, for public sector here in Germany, and it went exactly like this. So, uh, this this these worlds are similar, but there are some nuance in, difference in, term, in terms of use case. So that's why I decided to extra show it. Uh, and yes, in the uh, in the integration manager, you'll be able to add other widgets, like not only matrix applications, the ones that I show you, but probably it's going to be they're going to be also. Um, other add-ons or plugins available inside of this dialogue. But it's something that we also have to agree on with Element. I cannot s just state this right now, like um, top down. So. Uh, the integration manager itself, can that be attached to other clients like Fluffy Chat or other, not Element clients or? Um, Maybe it's better for the other topic tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know if we can answer that. Technical. Technically, yes. Yeah, technically, yes. Thanks for the question. Okay, uh, let's give Robert a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.